to Climb Divers. I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And welcome back. Hello everybody, welcome back. Oh, so today, if you have been following the last few couple of episodes, you've all realised that we are on a bit of a mini-series. A wee series, wee series. Yeah. So this is part three. Part three of the Life and Crimes of Shelley Notek, the lo- lovely, wonderful... Yes. monster yes. that she is so that we've already had to talk about it for two episodes now so we're on to a third a third one yeah so obviously if you haven't listened to the first two i would suggest just go back and listen. yeah go back and listen <laughs> um so the at the just a what I, what happened the last episode was basically the way that kathy loreno was being abused mm. by shelly and dave yeah um she was. This when she was made to like walk around naked and. Yeah, she was having to do all the chores naked. Yeah. Um, she, the um, she, they were giving her. Um, we found out that the uh, she was given Kathy sleeping pills. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was Prozac, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then Nikki and Shane, the cousins, mm-hmm. they they've been talking about running away. Um, and Shane tried a few times, but. He always came back. He always came back. And it, right at the end was the absolutely horrendous bit when um, Shelley put the... What was it called? Icy hot stuff. Oh, like our deep yeah. freeze and yeah, the deep yeah. heat. And they, put, they made him stand naked and she put on Shane's penis. That's right, yes. And he screamed in pain. Mm-hmm. So that's where we got to. So we are going to... Dive back in. Dive back in to part three. So when Shelley decided that it was time for Tori, I mean, this is the, the youngest, our youngest daughter, for Tori to have her own room, she told Kathy that Tori was going to be in her room and she had another cosy room for Kathy to sleep in. She put her in the oil furnace room down in the basement. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was tiny, it was only five by eight and it had a concrete floor and unfinished walls with exposed studs and even in the summer, it was freezing in there. Right. So that's where she was sleeping from Hard now cozy on. Cosy then, is it? No, very, very, okay. very not, not very cosy. Uh-uh. So one day in the winter, Kathy had done something to make Shelley angry, and Nikki and Sammy said this was the angriest that, that they'd seen their mum. Mm-hmm. The girls and Shane watched as Shelley and Dave made Kathy climb naked to the top of the hill behind the house. Um, they walked up as well, so. The, they went up to the top of the hill with her as well. And when at the top, Dave just shoved um, Kathy mm-hmm. and she fell all the way to the bottom. She just slid all the way to the bottom. Right. When at the bottom, Shelley yelled at her to get up and to crawl back up the hill. And this went on for hours. He just kept pushing her down the hill and making her um, crawl back up. And she was naked. Mm-hmm. The hill was icy. Mm-hmm. So her body was red raw. And, like, scraped from the hard ice. So she must have been in absolute That's agony. That's just unthinkable, man. Like, who does that to people? That's awful. That's the no-tex. Well, yeah, I mean, I know they do. They have done. But that, to think that it's... there's people like that in the world and people going through horrible, dreadful experiences like that is just... It's heartbreaking. It yeah. really is. I it mean, really is. I, have to, I have to say, doing this case... Um, I'm I'm ready to be done with her already. You know, yeah. we're on part three. I've already written part four. Uh-huh. And I'm reckon... So I reckon it's going to be maybe five or six. Uh-huh. But I'm done already. Like, it is... I mean, I, like, I'm finding myself having to stop. You just think, how and, much more can this woman yeah. inflict on yeah, people? Yeah, I know. You know I mean, like, we, we obviously do cases that, you know, talking about it for half an hour, four or five minutes is enough to gauge how much mm. terrible this a particular person is. But... To be actually living through that, I mean, yeah. this is this is abuse that went on for years and years and years. That's awful. Um, and as I said, like we're, you know, I'm spending a few hours researching it and writing it, mm-hmm. and then I'm talking to you about it for you know under an hour. Yeah. And that to me, that's a lot. As I was saying, I keep having to take a break, and um, oh, I might as well just let you and everybody else know that after we finish with this series, we're gonna. I think I'm going, to, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off, but you're going on holiday uh, anyway, so... It's holiday time um, soon. Yeah, Laura's going to Florida Woo-hoo. in a few weeks, so I'm, I'm going to take a break after that because... You probably need it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does. It takes its toll on, on our mental health mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so 
so this is what they were doing. They were pushing her down the hill and making her crawl back up. And this, you know, it went on for hours and hours. I mean, she must have been exhausted. She must have been in pain. She must have been freezing. Mm-hmm. Um, she was crying, apologising the whole time, begging for them to make it stop. Shane and the girls, they couldn't watch anymore and they actually, they went to bed. Mm-hmm. And in the morning they went outside and they could, all they could see on the hill was just this big red stripe coming down the hill. So that's obviously just her blood, Kathy's blood uh, from sl- from sliding uh-huh. down the hill. It was just, it was just a big red stripe. Uh-huh. In March 1991, Kathy's mum needed major heart surgery, but none of the family could get a hold of Kathy to mm-hmm. tell her. Right. They knew that she'd been living at the Notex, uh-huh. um, and they kept calling and calling, but nobody answered the phone. Finally, after several attempts, Shelley eventually answered. And when asked if Kathy was there... Her family was told that Kathy had moved away from the area. She told them that she had moved with her boyfriend Rocky. Mm-hmm. So Kathy's sister Kelly, she vaguely remembered Kathy telling her about someone called Rocky mm-hmm. in the past, obviously, but yeah. she'd never met him or anything like that, mm-hmm. and neither had anybody else in the family. Um, so she was just like, "Oh, all right, okay." Mm-hmm. So Kathy's family tried to find her, but as they had nothing really to go on, they were unsuccessful. Yeah. And after a while, our sister Kelly received a letter in the post. Mm-hmm. So it had a bloody picture of Kathy, and she had wrote that she was sorry that they didn't have a close relationship, but she was fine and she was with Rocky, and she said something along the lines that she wasn't coming back. Right, okay. Obviously, we know that she was actually at the no text. Yes, yeah, so and that was just um, Shelley doing that, I'm assuming. Yeah. Or making, or making Kathy, Kathy do it. it. I'm not yeah. sure, but that's uh-huh. that's what happened. So the following year, 1992, the Notex were going to move to a farmhouse that needed lots of work. It, but it sounded quite nice. It had like a small orchard. There was a big field and a forest surrounding it. Um, but at the front, it was like close to the main road. So the kids were hopeful that maybe the punishments wouldn't be so bad. Maybe Kathy wouldn't have to work outside naked in the yard. Uh-huh. Maybe Nikki and Shane wouldn't have to wallow because this house was more visible, you know, as I said, yeah. it, was, it was on a main road. Right. But unfortunately, though, when they moved in, they realised that it was actually more secluded than what they thought. Oh, right. And an outsider actually wouldn't be able to see that much. Right. Um, the property was just under five acres and mostly fenced, which was good because the Notex had a lot of animals. They had horses, dogs, cats, chickens, rabbit, cocktail. Um, unfortunately, though, Shelley claimed to love animals. She just seemed to collect them and not actually care for them. I was just going to say, were they actually cared for? I mean, other members of the family obviously looked after them, but, you know, it was Shelley that was collecting them, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a small... No. There were a few small outbuildings in the grounds. There was a tool shed, a barn, a well house, a pump house, as it, um, it had previously been a small farm. Mm-hmm. So there was also a bigger building that had, like, a workbench and, a, like, storage racks. It had a pantry and a freezer in it. So they needed the storage space as their house was just too small. I don't know why they moved there, but the house was too small. Right. It only had two small bedrooms and a slightly bigger main bedroom upstairs. So obviously, Shelley and Dave had the, the main room. Uh-huh. Um, and that was... that. Ha- there was only one bathroom. Right. And it was next to... I don't know if it was an ensuite or if it was just next to their bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um but there were still Shane, Nikki, Sammy, Tori and Kathy. So how were they all meant to fit into these other two uh-huh. small bedrooms? So Tori slept in with her parents and Nikki and Sammy had a bedroom each. So Shane slept in Nikki's wardrobe with just a blanket Oof. and Kathy slept on the floor in the living room. Oh, for fuck's sake. So the family got to work refurbishing the house. Nikki and Sammy were allowed to choose how they wanted their bedroom bedrooms decorated and Shelley got new carpets, and but she decided that she wanted to paint the house, like the outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So she got the paint, she wanted to paint the house red. So she got the paint, handed Nikki a one-inch paintbrush and told her to get on with it. So this basically took her all summer <laughs> to paint the house with this tiny one-inch Jeez. paintbrush. That's awful, isn't it? That's terrible. Um, Sammy, she had to paint the storage building, but she was get, given better supplies to paint with. Like, she obviously had rollers and yeah. you know whatever else uh-huh. um and shane was made to clean up the yard uh shelly just sat and watched tv all day every day while the kids were hard at work trying to make their their home you know more livable That's awful i mean there's nothing wrong with getting the kids to like help you do stuff uh-huh. but come on you can't just sit on your backside and expect it well i mean for for her obviously that is just the norm isn't it but, yeah I mean, most people would not dream of ever making their kids 
do it all. Like, I help out and mm-hmm. maybe contribute a wee bit, but not like that. Because sometimes no. the kids like to help and do stuff. Yeah. And, but that's yeah. just taking it to the extreme. Exactly. So Cathy was being treated just as bad before as before. She still wasn't allowed baths or showers. And no matter what the weather was, Shelley would make her stand naked in the yard and spray her with the hose. And instead of soap, she would pour bleach on her and would call her a filthy pig. Oh, my God. Like, Cathy had open sores all over her body from the abuse, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so she would scream in pain with the, you know, oh, the yeah. bleach touched them. Mm-hmm. But if she screamed too much or tried to get away, either Dave or Shelley would duct tape her legs and arms and sometimes her mouth so that the neighbours wouldn't hear her. Dave was working away from home um, and, and it was actually about five hours away so he would only come home at the weekends. Right. So when he wasn't there, Shelley would make Shane help her wash Cathy. Right. As the time went by, Dave started to see Cathy less and less and he, he asked the girls where she was and they told him that their mum kept Cathy in the pump house. Mm-hmm. Um, so Dave asked Shelley like, why she was keeping him. Like, why... It's Cathy in the pump house. Why are you freaking surprised? I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. the way she's been treated, come on. Um, but her reply was that Cathy needed protecting from the kids. Shelley told him that Shane was abusing Cathy so that she had to protect her. Right, so right. Dave knew that... The, he knew that the kids were good kids, so that was bullshit. Mm-hmm. But he knew better than to try and argue with Shelley, so he just left it at that. Um, but one day he did come home and he saw Shane dragging... Kathy around the yard by her feet. He had been told to do that by Shelley, and he did do it because if he didn't, well, he, the punishments to him would be even worse. Yeah. So you know, between it was between a rock and a hard place, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. But because Dave saw that, he decided that Shelley must have been telling the truth after all. That Shane was abusing Kathy. Right. Which, yeah, he was. But because he was told. But because he was being forced to do it, not he wasn't doing it under his own. But surely, Dave, come on, you've been participating in the abuse yourself over the years. So (sighs) why all of a sudden do you think that Shelley's some freaking angel protecting her, and that the kids are the ones that fall? I mean, you just like got total fucking blinkers on. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, he he totally predict predicts her, no, protects her, and it's like why you know what she's like. Uh Exactly, she's doing it to all of you. Uh Um, one day Shelley couldn't find Kathy. So she yelled to the kids that she had gone and to go into the woods and look for her. And they searched and searched, but they couldn't find her. So the kids, <clears throat> you know, hoped that she'd ran away and, yeah. you know, managed to get away. Mm-hmm. But Shelley, you know, got in the car and went hunting for her, you know, as she did if any of them tried to run away. Mm-hmm. And two hours later, she was back with Kathy. She had found her at the mall with a friend. She was wearing different clothes and she had two bags full of new clothes, like this friend had bought her, all the new clothes in her room. Shelley told the kids that she took Kathy into the toilets in the mall and they talked everything over and Kathy decided to come home. Mm, so. Yeah, exactly. I think she was forced to come How home. How bad is that way? Like she obviously managed to get away and she's then in a public place and that and Shelley is that adamant that she's gonna bloody find her, that she'll search us everywhere and by some miracle obviously finds her. And and uh, yeah, and somehow gets her back. I mean It just goes to show how much of a hold she had yeah. over Kathy. Oh, definitely. But it makes you wonder about the friend because mm. Kathy has obviously told the friend something. We don't know how much detail she's went into, uh-huh. but for this friend to buy Kathy new clothes and she'll have seen the state that Kathy was in. Absolutely. I mean, like, um, Kathy had lost weight, or you know, she was losing her hair, she was losing her teeth, she would have been covered in bruises and yeah. you know whatever else. So even if she couldn't stop Shelley from taking Kathy. Mm-hmm. Why did she not One, please. do something about it afterwards? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, like, get a welfare check done or something. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know the details about it, right. so, you know, we we can only kind of... Go off the details we have. Well, yeah, exactly. So we, we don't know. It does seem strange why, if she was, you know, in a public place with a friend and stuff like that, why it wasn't... Or how was it so easy? Well, it doesn't... I mean, not saying it was easy, but it sounds like it was easy for Shelley to get her back to the house. Well, I'm wondering if... She found him in the mall. She said to the friend uh, um, that she was going to go to the toilets with Kathy, and then she's just taken her. Mm. You know, the, she's not actually then you think that told Kathy the friend would, that they're going. Yeah, but then you think that, I mean, again, it's so hard to say, but if Kathy was also trying to get away, the last thing she would want to do is go anywhere alone with Shelley. If she's with a friend in a public place, she'd be like, no, I'm not going with you, but... 
I but we don't know what Shelley said to her. Mm. You know, Shelley could have said something like, well, if you don't come back, the punishments, I'll kill you. Or she could have threatened the kids. She could have mm. said, well, if you don't come back, I'm going to do this, that and the next thing to, yeah. to Tori, to Sammy, to, you know. True. We just don't know. But oh, the, that's what happened. She managed to get her back. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Kathy was put back into the pump house as punishment for running away and the kids never saw her wearing her new clothes. Mm-hmm. She did try to run away a few times after that, but Kelly... Kelly? No. Shelly. Shelly kept catching her. One punishment for that was that Kathy was made to lie naked on a concrete slab and and Shelly instructed Dave to kick her with his steel toe cap boots on and he like kicked, he was like kicking her in the head and everything. Oh, One day Shelly went into town and she told Shane to keep a watch over Kathy to make sure that she didn't try to escape. But once Shelley was gone, Shane said to Nikki, right, I'm letting Kathy out. This can't go on any longer. Because mm-hmm. um, he, he was having to participate in this as well. So mm-hmm. he wasn't only just seeing her Kathy being abused. Right. He was having to participate yeah, in it. Totally. And he was absolutely... He wasn't like that. That's not the kind of person he no. was. He, you know, mm-hmm. he hated it. Uh-huh. Um, so he was like, no, I'm letting her go. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really brave, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so she was she was getting weaker and weaker by the day. Her face was like all swelling up, and the last of her teeth were like little brown stubs, and she hardly had any hair left. So Shane told Kathy to run, but she wouldn't. She was just too terrified. Mm-hmm. She said that if she left, Shelley would find her, and well, I mean, I'm... she just didn't have any fight left. She'd given up. Oh, exactly. She yeah. Well, she tried to get away many, many times. So I mean. It's no wonder that she just didn't have the energy to keep trying yeah. because she just thought, well, it'll be the same outcome as it always is that I end up back here. Yeah, and like, not only, it's going to be physically and mentally, she just didn't have any fight left. She didn't have the strength to do it. So, meanwhile, Shelley was still lying to everybody about having cancer mm-hmm. and would even get Dave to ask his sister for money, saying that they needed it for their treatment. And it's just, and it, she's got no fucking shame, has she? No, and it's. If Dave didn't get enough money, like, she'd be screaming and shouting and saying that his family were, like, horrible people. And even though she kind of isolated him from his family anyway, uh-huh. she still expected him to go back and yes. ask for money. She's the only horrible one here. Yeah. So Shelley's mum, eh, Lara, mm-hmm. um, however, she still didn't believe that Lara, um, that Shelley had cancer. Mm-hmm. And she was sick of her shit. She was thinking, she was thinking about her grandchildren because she's like, those kids are being told that their mum is going to die. Mm-hmm. So that's just cruel. Absolutely. Um, so she was like, no, I'm going to go and confront Shelley. Mm. So she didn't tell Shelley that she was coming because she knew that Shelley would probably just go out. Huh. Um, so she took her daughter, so Shelley's um, half-sister, Carol. Mm-hmm. She took her with her. And when they knocked on the door, Shelley answered, but she looked bizarre. Her face was covered in, like, white makeup. And she had shaved off her eyebrows, obviously in an in a in a in a, in, a, uh, in an attempt to make it look like she was ill, because she was still like obviously trying. She didn't know that Lara was coming, but right. she was still yeah. trying to convince everybody else that she had cancer. Uh-huh. Yeah. So she put, made her face look white and shaved off her eyebrows and stuff. So she didn't look too happy to see her mum and sister, but she let them in. And Lara said, "Don't you know we're here to see how you are? Like mm-hmm. you know if you you've got cancer, so like is there anything we can do yeah. to help?" Uh-huh. Um. And she told Shelley that she would need the names of her doctors, the, the name of the clinic, um, because she felt that this had been going on for too long and she wanted to go through our medical bills. So she was acting like the concerned mother, like, I want to help you out. Mm-hmm. Um, she, Shelley didn't answer, so she was like, well, how, how sick are you after the treatment? You know, you, mm-hmm. like, how are you feeling? And Shelley was like, oh, I'm really sick. And then she got up and went to the bathroom and... While she was in the bathroom, the kids had came home from school. So they were there as well. Yeah. And when she came out, she had a handful of hair. And she like just dropped it on the floor and cried that her hair was falling out. Oh, fuck off. She's also just cut that hair. <laughs> well, Lara picked it up and she was like, oh, I've never known anyone who's been on cancer treatment to have their hair fall out from the middle. Like, usually they use it from the scalp, not yeah. like halfway down. Yeah. Um, so she went into the bathroom and... You know, surprise, surprise, she found some scissors with hair still in the scissors. Okay, so she says she took the scissors back into the living room. But yet Shelley still refused to tell the truth. But at least the kids realised now that she didn't have cancer yeah. and she wasn't at death's door. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how they felt about that anyway, judging on the way that 
the mum like, well, treated they, them. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, she's still your mum. But were they kind of? Uh, but Lara, oh, ow! I just kicked the laptop and nearly knocked my juice over. <laughs> but Lara didn't know about the abuse, mm-hmm. so she would have been thinking in a normal situation, a family situation, least. that they would be absolutely devastated to know that their mother was dying oh, yeah. of cancer, of course. So. Mm-hmm. And really <coughs> find out that she wasn't, but then maybe like, well, why did you lie to us? But, you mm. know. So anyway, um, as Shane was getting older and bigger, he started pushing back a bit. So he actually thought that Dave was worse than Shelley because he was a grown man and sh- he shouldn't be doing everything that, that Shelley told him. Mm-hmm. So although she was the one that was instigating the abuse, mm-hmm. he thought he was worse for for not, not standing up to her. Yeah. yeah. Um, one day he even Shane even hit Dave and they ended up in like a physical fight. Right. Um, and he would tell Nikki that he needed to get away from there and like she was she wanted to go too but she only had a couple of years left of high school so she was just desperately like, trying to make it through that mm-hmm. and then she could obviously get you know away. she could get away yeah but um, she didn't want Shane to to um, leave her because. They were sort of allies, you know. They they, right. they kind of stuck together yeah, yeah. because they were the ones who were getting the worst of it. Because Sammy, mm-hmm. she she was treated like a princess, basically, compared to what they were yeah. treated like. Mm-hmm. And Tori was still, you know, right, still okay. young, so they were each other's like rock. Bag, yeah. yeah. Um. So that it, 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 so he promised that if he did run, then he would take her with him. <clears throat> but he said if he had to go quick, then he would he would come back for her. So one day, um, Shelley was on the, sitting on the couch watching TV, because that's all she ever did, and she glanced over to the kitchen where Cathy was cleaning, and she saw a Tupperware container with feces in it mm-hmm. on the floor. And she ran, like, basically, uh, probably never ran so fast in her life, got off the couch, ran to the kitchen and grabbed, like, a power cord that was on the counter, and she started whipping Cathy with this power cord. Right. She pulled her hair and she dragged her around the kitchen by it, shouting at her that she was filthy and she never wanted to see anything like that in her kitchen again. Which, yeah, I understand that must have been horrible to see, but Cathy had to ask for permission from Shelley to use the toilet and Shelley had been asleep. So Cathy was too scared of Shelley to wake her up and ask to use the toilet. <clears throat> and I'm assuming she was too scared to just sneak off mm-hmm. in case... Um, in case you got caught, like, in mm-hmm. case she had So, she done the next, ne- next best thing, really, and, like, found something to do it in. And she's probably meant to get rid of it before mm-hmm. Shelley's woken up, because she's obviously dozed off in front of the telly, yeah. and she's not got rid of it in time. That's awful. Yeah, so I can, I can see why she's done it. I mean, mm-hmm. it sounds awful that she's done it, but mm-hmm. better that than shitting herself, or... Well. Or, I don't, oh, I don't, need, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's, exactly, if you yeah. need to go, you need to go. And that's, she shouldn't, she shouldn't have to ask permission to go to the freaking toilet, that's awful. Uh, so Shelley was raging and she wanted to punish Cathy even more than she already did. So she told Dave to waterboard, waterboard her. She told him to make like a seesaw-like device, so it was like a sort of plank of wood over something, like maybe a barrel or something. Right, okay, so, yeah. you know, yeah. it'd be like a seesaw. Um... So at one end of the road, they placed a bucket of water and then Shelley went to get Cathy from the pump house. She was naked as usual and Shelley actually had to help, help her walk as she was so weak, like she was really struggling to walk now. And um, Dave put her face down on the wood. She did try and fight him, but she just wasn't strong enough. Mm-hmm. He then wrapped duct tape around her, and the, like to the plank, so taped mm-hmm. her to the plank so that she couldn't move. He then lowered her head into the water and held her under and then pulled her head out, ducked her back under, and he just kept doing it over and over again. Cathy was, like, gargling and screaming and Shelley was just shouting at her about how worthless she was. And mm-hmm. th- This is just horrific. Like, I think this is this could be the worst abuse I think I've, I've heard. I mean, we've had, we've had some pretty mm-hmm. bad cases over the years of people that have been abused and tortured and all the rest of it, but I have to say this... This is up there. This is up there going one of the worst that I think I've ever heard. The beatings continued. Shelley would take rotten food out of the fridge and put it in, in the blender and feed it to Cathy and call it a smoothie. I mean, this would be like rotten meat and, you know, maybe salad stuff that's all shriveled up and God knows what oh, else. Yeah. Um... One day, Nikki saw her fill up a cup with salt. 
Then Shelley and Shane went out to the pump house and made Cathy eat the whole cup of salt. And then gave her some pills and made her take those as well. One day after weeks of isolation in the pump house, Shelley decided to give Cathy a proper shower. Sammy brought her into the house and helped her walk. And she described Cathy as just one giant bruise. Um, she had lost over a hundred pounds. Her skin was just hanging off her. She barely had any teeth or hair. But when and when they got to the bathroom, they realised that she wasn't strong enough to like to to stand up in the shower. So Shelley decided to give her a bath instead. I don't know why she was feeling so kind, mm. but she decided to give her a bath instead. So she ran the bath, and as they tried to get Cathy into the bath, she actually slipped. <clears throat> And hit the shower door, so the shower door came off its rail, and the tempered glass just like shattered everywhere. Oh, Kathy had rolled over in the glass and cut her legs and her abdomen, oh. um. So she was like bleeding everywhere, and like by now Shelley looked scared. She realised that Kathy needed to go to hospital, mm-hmm. but of course she couldn't let her go because the abuse would be found out, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she told Kathy she could stay in the house now, um. And she started to clean her up, like, try to stop the bleeding with, like, towels and toilet roll. She obviously needed stitches, but mm. Shelley just wrapped bandages around her and then and that was it. Just, she just didn't, didn't get any medical attention. So David had been building an extension at the back of the house. It was small, but it was heated and dry, unlike the pump house. So Shelley put a mattress, pillow and blankets down for Cathy to sleep on and... So she was like, right, you know, put her into the bed, tucked her in and told her that everyone was going to be okay. And I'm like, how can you tell her that? And how she's not going to fucking believe you. So not long after that, one day, Sammy and Nikki helped Cathy into the living room and they sat her down in the front, in front of the TV where Tori was watching cartoons. And they'd given her one of Tori's toys, which was like a plastic phone with two cords that connected together. Mm-hmm. But Cathy tried over and over to connect the pieces, which... A three or four year old should have been able to do, mm-hmm. and she just couldn't do it. So it was at that point that the kids realised that there was something wrong with Kathy's brain. I think she'd been kicked in the head, and you know it whatever. Too many fucking times. Yeah. Right? So I think she had some kind of mm-hmm. like brain damage. Yeah. Soon after, Dave noticed that one side of Kathy's face had started to droop. Mm-hmm. He also noticed that she didn't seem to be able to understand what he was saying. And, like, he would put his finger in front of her face, but, she, like, she couldn't follow it with her eyes. Mm-hmm. Her balance was off. She couldn't stand or walk alone. She was deteriorating, but Shelley insisted that she was getting better. She's like, no, she's in the house now. I'm looking after her. She's getting better. No, she's no, not. She's no, you fucking damaged her beyond repair. <laughs> so Dave came home from work one day, um, just as Shelley, Tori and Sammy were leaving to go and pick Nikki up from work. And he heard, like, gurgling sound. Sounds coming from Kathy's room. So he mentioned it, to, he was like, to Shelley, like, what's wrong with Kathy? Yeah. And Ka- Sh- uh, Shelley was just like, oh, she's fine. And they, they just left and went to pick up Nikki. Mm-hmm. So Dave went into Kathy's room to see what, like, what the noise was. And she was lying in bed. She had thrown up and she was choking on the vomit. Mm-hmm. Her eyes rolled back into the sockets and she was struggling to breathe. So he, like, started shaking her, but she was, like, listless. And he was like, Kathy, are you okay? Are you okay? And like, she was just like gurgling. And like, Dave was panicking now. And he's like shouting to Shane. Shane was doing the dishes. And she's like, you know, Kathy can't breathe. So Dave managed to get her on, on her side. And he started clearing the, the vomit out of her mouth and her nose. Mm-hmm. And she still wasn't breathing. So he started CPR on her. And he said, he said later that he knew that he should have called 911. But he didn't want to get Shelley into trouble for the obvious abuse. Mm-hmm. And he tried and tried to revive Cathy, but unfortunately there was nothing more he could do and Cathy had died. I mean, it's obviously absolutely awful, but in some ways, like, I kind of... For her. For her, it, like... Yeah, it would be a relief. Exactly. Like, that she was be, not having to... Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it should never have got to no, that stage in the course. first place, obviously. But, you know, rather you know, than being tortured like that every day and just, let's like, see, our body's probably broken beyond repair because mm-hmm. of all the abuse over the years that it probably was the kindest thing maybe to happen to her in that sense that it's awful isn't it like just to actually say those words to actually think that is absolutely awful uh-huh. like she'd been a perfectly perfectly healthy happy woman before mm-hmm. she moved in there yeah so this should never have been you know it should never happen of course no. so dave called the restaurant where nikki worked and managed to get a shelly on the phone as she was there picking her up uh-huh. 
he told Shelley that Kathy was dead and she came right home. The girls knew that something was up and they were like, is Kathy okay? And she's like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. So when they got home, Dave told the girls to go to their rooms and took Ka- took um, Shelley to see Kathy because Shelley hadn't really believed that she was dead. She was like, yeah, yeah whatever, like, mm-hmm. she'll be fine. So they started yelling at each other because Shelley, for some reason, couldn't quite understand how Kathy had died. Are you serious? Nikki sneaked downstairs and went into Kathy's room and saw that she was dead and she went back up to tell Sammy. Mm-hmm. And I think... It's, I think at some point Sammy actually had went down and looked. Right. Um, so, of course, they were really upset and Shelley came to see what the commotion was. She comforted Sammy for a minute and then she told the girls to get in the car. Shane said, we need like we need to call an ambulance. But Shelley was like, no, there's no point, she's gone. So the kids were hysterical. Shelley and Dave were um, crying and at that point, that's when Dave realised that he, he should have put his foot down. And put a stop to the abuse. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but it's a bit late. Too little, too fucking late. Yeah. So Shelley took the girls to a motel at about 10 p.m. and told them that she'd be back later with Shane and told them not to talk to anyone. She said that, she, you know, the, stay in your room, don't go out, don't talk to anyone. Um, she said that she needed to go back and find out what happened. And, um, you know, she was still under the illusion, under the illusion that it wasn't her fault. Like... So Shelley had left and she came back with um, Shane about midnight. So the Notex had a fire pit in their yard where they burned their rubbish. So Dave decided to burn Kathy's body there as no one would think of anything of it because they used it regularly. Um, so he lined it with like tin and steel so it would like hold in the heat because obviously to burn a body you have, it has mm. to be very hot. Yeah. And he and Shane carried Kathy's body and put her on the, put on, on the fire. So that's what they've been doing when Shelley went back and Mm -hmm. so then she got once I'd done that she she took Shane back to the motel with her Mm -hmm. the following morning Dave loaded up the ash and bone into buckets and he drove to the beach where he put Kathy's remains into the ocean so it made like three trips to to get rid of it all he had to keep going there and back Mm -hmm. um Shelley got all uh, Kathy's stuff and burned all that as well so there was no trace of Kathy at the no tech home Mm -hmm. it was like she'd never been there so a couple of days after they had burned Kathy's body, Shelley told Shane and Nikki to go out to the burn pile with a bucket. She wanted them to clean it out. And they found pieces of bone and jewellery that they knew belonged to Kathy. And she made them check like three or four times to make sure that every last piece was gone. But I'm like, imagine you're a kid and like a teenager and you're having to go and clean out this fire knowing fine well what has been burnt in there and like you're picking out pieces of somebody's bone it's, it's, a, it's just mental this is actually fucking real life no nah, i know happened. like it's almost like this is like a story that's been made up that's like a horror film where, yeah you know something like that. It's like actually this actually happened this to, actually happened yeah, yeah this is awesome. real people this is real people's I, lives i'm actually gonna say this right now i think this is one of the worst cases we've actually ever covered like, I feel like it's way up there for me. I think um, probably as well because I've went so in-depth with it. Obviously, yeah. we've had other cases where there's been torture and oh, murder yeah. before. I mean, but I haven't went stuff. so far into it. But I think because this is such a deep dive, I mean, it's it doesn't make it any better or any worse. No. But I think because we're getting more details, yeah. and so it makes it seem worse yeah. than what the other ones are. Because oh, we have had some pretty bad ones. But this, to me, this I feel like this is one of the worst ones that I think... Yeah, I definitely took a deep dive, don't I? You know, I know. but it's, you know, it's, it's good to get, you know, because, say, Cathy, you know, bless Pure her Kathy. soul, you know, she deserves her, I mean, how torturous a story it is, that's hers, but, you know, it's her, you know, she deserves to be remembered and, you know, that definitely. she existed and stuff, and it's horrific, unimaginable what happened here. And, I know, it's, it's absolutely know. awful. Mm-hmm. So, Shelley told the family that if anyone asked... Kathy had ran off with her boyfriend, Rocky. She got Nikki to forge letters and cards from Kathy about her adventures on, on the road with Rocky. Um, she'd been to Mexico, she'd been to Canada, she'd been to California, and she was happy and she wasn't coming back. And then she sent Dave to post a card to Kathy's mum. She made him go all the way to Canada to post it, um, to, you know, so it would have the postmark, postmark of Canada. Um. Um, yeah, so sorry, I just totally had a 
I lost my place. Yeah, so she sent Dave to post the card. So she sent him to Canada. Um, but then she had second thoughts. So she made him go to Kathy's mum, who only lived, I think she lived quite close by to them, like in the same sort of town. Um, so then he had to go and steal it back. So basically, you know how in America they have the... It's not like us, the, the letters don't come into the house, do they? They go into like a, a post, post a mailbox, mailbox yeah, thing, yeah. 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 Um, so she had... Uh, Shelley had the mailbox key because Shelley had been had been in Kathy's belongings right, okay. and she'd actually kept it for whatever reason because right. she got rid of all Kathy's belongings. So I don't know why she'd kept this key, uh-huh. but she'd kept the mailbox key. So she sent Dave to sit outside and wait until the postman had been and to check the mail every day or whatever because obviously they're not going to know exactly when it was no, going to no. be delivered. Yeah. So as soon as the as soon as the mailman had been, he would go and like check in it. <laughs> He got the letter back. So he went all the way to Canada, post his card, <laughs> and then went and stole it back before Kathy's mum even got to see it. Um, so Shelley was still worried about Kathy's death being discovered. So she told Shane that if they were caught, then she was going to blame it all on him, that he had killed Kathy. Mm-hmm. So, charming. Mm-hmm. So as Kathy was gone now, Shirley, <laughs> Shelley... Started punishing Nikki and Shane again, and Shane was desperate to leave. Uh-huh. Um, she- Shelley was convinced that Shane was going to tell about Kathy's death, uh-huh. but Dave knew that Shane wouldn't do that. And he was like, "Of course he's not," because he-, he he knew Shane wouldn't want the girls having to go into the foster system. Uh-huh. You know, I don't know. Like at this point, it's probably better. Than <laughs> well, yeah, I know <laughs> it would have been probably, uh-huh. but Shelley didn't trust Shane. She just kept nagging and nagging at Dave that that. You know that Shane was going to tell at some point. Mm-hmm. One day he came home. Dave came home from work to Shelley crying. She held up a pair of bloody knickers that she said that she had found in the woodshed, and that Shane must have hidden them in there. These were Tori's knickers. So remember, Tori's. I don't know how old she was, but she was little. Wow. Yeah. Um. So Shane was abusing Tori, and Dave had to do something about it. Dave didn't believe it. And neither did Nikki or Sammy. They knew that Shane would never do anything like that. I don't believe it either. No. <laughs> and, and of course, they knew what their they knew their mother and they yeah. knew what she was capable of. Like, what does she of. actually think? Is she just like that, thinking she's, they're going to believe what she's saying? I mean, but, well, yeah, she's, everything that she's done... She's obviously deluded. Totally deluded. And So they knew that. They knew that she was totally capable of putting blood on a pair of Tori's knickers and accusing him of abuse. Yeah. But Shelley made Dave beat Shane that night. And the following morning, Shane told Nikki he was going to have to run, even if she, even if she didn't go with him. This was just that was it. Yeah, like, about I mean to go through everything that he's gone through and then be accused of that. Mm-hmm. I've been, you know, of, the thing is, Shelley was never well at this point. You know, she's never going to admit to any of her wrongdoings. Oh, of like course she, not. She's going to be playing the oh, it wasn't me. It was. Mm-hmm. You know him scenario till the cows come home. Like he was, he's always going to get the blame for everything. After, you know, if, mm-hmm. if, if anything was to come up about Kathy or anything like that, it's, it's just going to be directed in, in his way. So I mean, so he was like, I need to get away from yeah. this. So in February of 1995, Shelley and Dave gathered the girls in the living room and told them that Shane had ran away the night before. And they were like, Don't worry, we'll find them. You know, we always find them. Um, and they asked if they heard anything the night before, and they were like, no, nope, they never heard a thing. But Nikki had noticed that when she had went to bed, Shane wasn't in her cupboard, like in her wardrobe or whatever it was, yeah. where he usually slept. Shane had made a birdhouse as a school project, and Shelley said that he had left it for her, and that he'd left a note saying, I love you, Mum. Funnily enough, nobody saw that note. All right. Nikki and Sammy didn't believe for a second that he had left the birdhouse, or left a note, as they knew... Th- knew that he hated Shelley. Mm-hmm. So they were like, you know, he's, she's obviously making out that she's all butthurt about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. So Shelley and the girls got in the car later that day and did the usual hunt for Shane mm-hmm. as they ran away quite often, but they just weren't, they weren't looking for long, which was strange because, you know, usually Shelley had them looking for hours. A couple of weeks later, the girls got home one afternoon and Shelley told them that they'd just missed Shane on the phone He had called and said that he was away in Alaska on a fishing trip and that he was doing great and that he was missing them all. I know, I can see that look on your face. (laughs) You're not believing it, are you? I'm not in the fucking slightest. So now, of course, that Shane and Kathy were both gone, poor Nikki had the full wrath of Shelley on her. Mm -hmm. 
Shelley would often lock Nikki out of the house, um, but it started to come become like a daily occurrence. She would like sleep. She would have to sleep in like one of the outbuildings or in the woods at the back of the house because it was actually warmer there because it was sheltered, mm-hmm. you know, with the trees and stuff. Shelley would tell her that she was worthless and that no one would ever love her. She would be outside all night, quite often naked, and like she would see the lights on in Tori and Sammy's room and wonder why like her mother hated her so much. Mm-hmm. Like that's heartbreaking. That's so now and again, Shelley would let Nikki in and she would make her some food and tell her how much she loved her and all would be good for like a day or two. Mm-hmm. And then she would come home from work or whatever and she'd be locked out again. Nikki started hiding clothes and blankets in the chicken house so that if she did get locked out, she would have supplies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she, she, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. One, one time, Nikki was working outside in the yard in just her underwear and Shelley came at her with a knife. Like, Nikki ran into the woods with Shelley chasing her. She caught up with her and she pinned Nikki down and, like, slashed her, her leg with a knife. For fuck's sake. Nikki, I don't know why, Nikki got away from her and ran again and she slept in the woods that night. Like, she just didn't know why, what is, she'd oh, done. This is, like, so unbelievable at 10 points. This is crazy. I know. Uh, one afternoon, Sammy was doing her chores and she went into the chicken house and um, Nikki was sitting on a hay, hay bale and she was like both. She was laughing, but she was crying at the same time. And she told Sammy that she just tried to kill herself. Um, but she had used some twine and like put it over a beam to make a noose, but it snapped when she tried to hang herself. Yeah. So that had just happened. So she was like sort of laughing and crying because mm-hmm. she was obviously that desperate that she tried to do it, but even that hadn't worked. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I could, you know, yeah. oh. So um, Nikki graduated from school in 1993. She enrolled in community college to study criminal justice. But as usual, Shelley wouldn't let her be happy. She took all her clothes away that she wore to class and all she had left was the clothes that she wore to work in the yard, which was like, it was like a dirty pair of joggers and a t-shirt, which, you know, they were they were all ripped. Mm-hmm. They were, how she meant to go to college like that. Mm-hmm. Um, then... Shelley told Nikki that she no longer had a bedroom upstairs. Not that she'd been sleeping there that much anyway. No, um, but she was to sleep on the floor in the living room where Kathy used to sleep before mm-hmm. she'd give her the bed and whatnot. Um, she, and she also took away Nikki's money and her car um, to get to class because Nikki didn't deserve anything that they gave her. She was selfish. She was ungrateful. So Nikki was trapped. She needed to go to school so that she could basically get herself an education and yeah. get away from her parents. Uh-huh. But... She didn't have a car to get to class and she didn't even have money to get the bus. No, and clothes, or even clothes, clothes to, yeah. to wear. So basically she, she can't go she can't go to college. That's awful. Is that that's obviously what Shelley wanted to do. Yeah, of course. So Shelley put her to work in the yard and made her do jobs that didn't even really need doing, like moving wood from one side to the other. Or like digging up the garden to make a flower bed. But yeah, Shelley had no intention of planting flowers. any flowers. Yeah. She would wake Nikki up early, send her outside, and she wasn't allowed to come back in until night time. Shelley would go out and check on her, and she would call her a lazy bitch for not if she didn't think that she'd done enough. She told her she needed to get a job because she was a worthless piece of shit, but I don't know how she expected Nikki, Nikki to do that when she had no clothes or transport to go anywhere. So how, how the hell was she meant to get a job? Just fucking psychological abuse, isn't it? So finally, Nikki spoke up. She yelled at both Shelley and Dave, how the fuck is she supposed to get a job with no car, no clothes and no money? And Je- and Shelley was like, sort of along the lines of, well, why don't you say something sooner? I didn't realise that was a problem, that you didn't have a car. Fuck off. <laughs> so Nikki started sticking up for herself more and more. She was older now and she was obviously stronger. And one time Shelley chased her when she refused to do something, but... Shelley caught up to her, knocked her over, pinned her down, screamed at her, and she was, like, pulling her hair. But this time, Nikki fought back, Mm. and she pushed Shelley off her. Shelley, like, landed on the ground and looked utterly shocked, and Nikki was like, fuck off, Mum, don't ever touch me again. And then she ran into the woods and just stayed there for the rest of the night, because she was like, "Mm, I think I pushed it a bit Uh, far there. Yeah. A couple of um, days later, uh, Shelley went to talk to Nikki, and she told her that Sammy didn't want her there anymore. She said it was because Sammy didn't think it was right that Nikki had fought back, that she shouldn't be fighting with her mother. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So, of course, that was bullshit. You know, it was Shelley who didn't want her there because she was sticking up for herself now. She, you know. Absolutely, yeah. So, Shelley told her that she was sending her to Aunt Trisha's, who was Dave's sister, right. for a wee break. Nikki didn't even know Trisha. She had, like, literally met her twice in her whole life. 
Um, and she lived four hours away on a reservation in uh, British Columbia. Right. Shelley gave her some clothes, $50 in cash, and dropped her off at the bus station. And she told her to come back in 10 days. So Nikki was nervous. She'd never been away by herself. Imagine just, mm-hmm. you've never been anywhere yeah. by yourself. And then your mum just like, here, there's right. 50 quid. See you. There's some clothes. Off you go. There's the bus. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was, you know, she was going to stay with a stranger, but it turned out the best thing that she'd ever done. She told Aunt Trish that things weren't good at home. She didn't go into detail, but she said that, you know, she, she didn't want to go. She begged her not to send her back. She didn't want to go back. Yeah. Um, and she didn't. Weeks turned into months and, like, Trish got Nikki to help her at work. She cleaned churches and houses. And at the weekends, Nikki learned how to tie fishing nets. Like, Nikki was happy and she never wanted to leave. Yeah. And Sammy, she totally understood why Nikki hadn't came back. She was gutted that she'd left. She didn't want her to leave. Yeah, even course. though her mum had told her that. Uh-huh. Um, but she knew exactly what Nikki had been through with um, their mum. So she didn't really blame her. But Tori... She was um, she was only about maybe six, you know, so she was still really small. She felt abandoned. Mm-hmm. Um, or like, Nikki had been, like, a second mum to her. She'd always made time for her. She'd always been really good to her. Yeah. Um, but the night that Nikki left, Tori had written a note to Jesus to ask to bring her sister back. Aww. And she had no idea where Nikki had gone. Nobody bothered to tell her right. where Nikki was. Nikki had just... She was six years old, and right. her big sister just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um... But she suspected it was because that her mum had been cruel to her. Um, she left an, the note on her windowsill, this note to Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, but the next morning she woke up to her mum punching and slapping her in the face because she had read the note. Oh. So that was the first time that Shelley had ever done anything like this to Tori, and mm-hmm. she was terrified. So she'd had the si- first six years of her life, her mum being a normal mum yeah. to her. She had an idea of what her sisters were going through because she was seeing bits and pieces, but she didn't know the full extent of it because obviously she was young. Yeah, for sure. But at six years old, to be getting punched and slapped in the face, yeah, that's... that horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Mm-hmm. And after that, Shelley would tell Tori that Nikki was no good and that Nikki didn't love Tori. And, that, and then one day she just stopped talking about Nikki. She stopped mentioning her. And Dave, would, Dave was the same. They just never talked about Nikki. And it was as if she never existed. Mm-hmm. Sammy never brought her up either, but that's because she was too scared to. She was actually still in touch with Nikki, but right. she didn't want her parents to know that. Yeah. So, although Aunt Trish tried to keep Nikki with her in British Columbia, Shelley decided that she wanted her back. Aye, enough is enough. And <laughs> Trish was no match against Shelley, so Nikki was sent back. But she didn't come home. She just didn't want her with Trish. She was right. probably too scared of what she was going to tell her. She was probably... Too scared of her getting so comfortable yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. maybe spilling the beans. Uh, yeah. um, but she didn't come home. Shelley told her that she needed t- some time to think because she didn't think she was a very good role model for her sisters. Yeah, fuck off. So Nikki ended up living in a, in a tent with Dave, her dad, opposite his work, which, if you remember, was about five hours away. Mm-hmm. And that's why, that's why Dave only went home at weekends. So Dave was actually living in a tent... During the week and then going home at the weekend. So Nikki ended up... Is that up... not random? Like, is that... Does his work fucking colleagues not think, what the fuck are you doing, Dave? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like, what? Um, but yeah, that's where Nikki ended up. And Nikki's eyes were opened in that time because she saw... Because she didn't know what... I mean, she knew that her dad was away working, but she didn't know how he was basically spending his life mm-hmm. while he was away. Yeah. So she saw that despite Dave working full time, he had no money. Mm-hmm. Shelley was getting all his money. She she must she mustn't have realised before exactly how much of his money was going to Shelley, mm-hmm. and it must have been pretty much all of it. He lived in a tent, mm-hmm. um, and he didn't even have any money for food. Like him and Nikki had to use the local food bank to get food, and they would shower every morning. There was a state park nearby, mm-hmm. so they would shower every morning there. So she obviously hadn't realised how bad things mm-hmm. were for him, yeah. uh, you know, before. She would go home with him to to Shelley's at the weekends. And Shelley would be like, well, do you think you deserve to come home yet? Do you think you could pull your weight if you come back? And Nikki was like, well, do you think I'm ready? Mm-hmm. And Shelley would say, no, you need more time. And Nikki was quite happy with that. Yeah. She was like, she would rather be homeless than right. live back there. Back there yeah. So she continued to live in the tent with Dave. And she got herself a job at Baskin and Robbins. Oh, yeah. And then she got a second job cleaning motel rooms. I've served Baskin and Robbins before. Yeah. When I worked at Warner Brothers. Yeah, Laura's worked at Baskin and Robbins, sort of. 
Yeah, I worked at Warner Bros. We had that. We had the ice cream counter in there. You put your hand down now. Oh, yeah, like... <laughs> I'm not your teacher. <laughs> no. It's quite an ice cream actually. I've never had it. Oh, no, did I have it when I came to see you at work? Maybe I did have it then. But I can't remember. Mm. Obviously, it didn't stand out that much to me. No. Anyway. So, yeah, she got a job at Baskin and Robbins and then she got a second job cleaning motel rooms where the owner let her live in a wee trailer. So, at last, Nikki felt free. Mm -hmm. So, going to leave it there for (laughs) part three. Okay. I think that's enough. That's been nearly an hour. So, thank you to everybody for listening if you made it this far. (laughs) Yes, hopefully you are still with us. Yeah, because I understand it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to listen to. I think some people might like a, a deep dive in a case sometimes. Yeah, so I do like... get that. I mean, you know, me personally, when I listen to podcasts, I'm not really into the big deep dives uh-huh. because I do think it's a lot. And I think maybe because I do, a, obviously, we do a true crime podcast. So a lot of the time I'm doing my own research. So to go and listen to another true crime podcast, it's sometimes too much yeah. to listen to deep dives for, yeah. for me personally. Uh-huh. But... Yeah, we're just having a change. Exactly. And it, it's not going to happen very often. I don't even know if I could do it again, like do a, a new series. I, I think we'll probably just go back to our normal <laughs> yes, um, one off episodes. So thank you to everybody for listening. And um, mm-hmm. we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.